Okay, today is going to be a great day. We have some awesome budget meals that we are going to make today. All of these will cost a dollar or less per serving, so let's get into it. I'll be doing some ground turkey meals. You can use whatever ground meat you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and season mine up. I'm gonna use this for all three meals, so just some basic seasonings in here and some seasonings that kind of go with each of the meals, I think. So some salt, kind of watching my salt measurements here. I usually put way too much on when I do it, and then I eat it and I'm like, you know what? I can't really, you know, give this meal some kind of discounted rating because of my salt problem <laughs> so i'm trying to curb my salt i love salt though putting a little bit of fresh garlic in there i think that that is the number one thing that tastes the best fresh and it's relatively cheap when you get like a whole clove or you can buy it like in the three pieces they sell them at usually all grocery stores I'm gonna divide up my turkey into three different portions and then I'll take the two away and put them aside in the refrigerator until I need them for the other meals. So this first meal idea, I went online and it just kind of popped up in one of my random searches I was doing for some budget meal ideas and it was Loco Moco, which is a dish that Hawaiians eat so I thought I would give this a try and I really like this because it kind of reminds me of an SOS and I really really like those so this was very similar to that I went online and I did look up a couple of different versions of this as with most recipes it's hard to tell where some originated from or like the exact one that is what they eat on in whatever state country whatever but i found one that i was like okay it's simple i like the ingredients they seem pretty basic most of them had the same sort of ingredients in there i didn't see that they added soy sauce to their mushrooms but I decided to do that because lately I've been really into sauteing my mushrooms with some soy sauce and I think it's really good and I'm so glad that I did because actually that was my favorite part of this dish like with all of the flavors together so you can try it that way if you want or you don't have to put soy sauce in there. I would also, letting you know ahead of time, spoiler alert, I would make two eggs for the top. All the ones that I saw just put one, but honestly I think that the egg whites and the yolk from the egg really, really add so much to this meal. So if you have it in the budget or you have two eggs, maybe you need to get rid of two eggs before they go bad, you know, maybe you need to put a little extra protein in the diet, I would definitely recommend two fried eggs. Normally, I do like my fried eggs, the yolk, completely hard. This one, I resisted the urge to cook it longer to get that center yolk hard because it's kind of needing to be a little bit more runny. So I resisted that urge and I made my egg accordingly. And I am using this turkey gravy. It was on sale, like Uber sale at Kroger. I don't know why. It's good until next year so I don't know but I snagged a couple put a couple in my pantry you can make whatever kind of gravy you want it does usually say like a brown gravy but if you want to do a white gravy you just go ahead and then kind of topping everything I could have mixed the meat and the mushrooms together but for presentation reasons I kind of wanted to keep them separate And without further ado, I'm going to take my first bite and let you know exactly what I thought of this meal. That is a seven. 
I honestly think that with a few tweaks, adding more mushrooms, because they were so good, I wanted a mushroom in every bite. I really did. And then the second thing would be to add another fried egg because this was like cooked to perfection for me and it tasted so good. Oh, it was so good together. And then the last thing I would personally throw and add in here is some chopped jalapenos because I think that would be really good. And if you've ever been to Waffle House and experienced their grits bowl, well, I recommend that you do try that, but if you have, then you'll know what I'm kind of making here. This is something that I always order when I go to Waffle House. I haven't been there in a long time, and I've been lately having this like massive craving to eat one of these bowls, and I've been really wanting some grits. I love grits. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make this at the house, and I bet you I can make it cheaper than they did at Waffle House. And Waffle House generally has been really cheap in the past but I haven't been there in a while so I'm sure with inflation the prices of that have gone up so I'm really glad that I tried this at home I don't know why I never did before because it's so simple so basic I think a lot of people will have these ingredients on hand now if you don't like grits don't want to use grits you can you can use oatmeal I did this but it just doesn't have the same flavors that rich like corn taste from the grits is just it just makes everything come together so I do recommend the grits but you know if you don't like grits well bless your little heart you can add your cheese add whatever cheese you want and then my husband introduced me to Uncle Tom and it's kind of a joke but not I guess he doesn't like to use the whisk so he says you need to use chopsticks so I was like you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and try this I, I really didn't like the chopsticks sorry Uncle Tom I'll go back to my whisk from now on I think it's a great tool Getting my eggs whipped up, gonna get those cooked. You can cook your scrambled eggs to however you like them, of course. I honestly like to put a little bit of butter on my eggs right before they're done. I think that, that just coats them very nicely on the outside and gives them that nice rich flavor. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. And then look at that steaming bowl of goodness. I mean, look at this, just look at it. I did add some jalapenos. That's not really, I mean, you can get that at the Waffle House. So I was like, I'm gonna throw them on there and I'm so glad I did, oh my gosh. This meal was fantastic. I have to tell you before the 10 comes up because, oh, it was a 10. It was so good. And this is gonna be on my like weekly, monthly, I need to eat this meal, meal. So let me know if you've ever been to Waffle House, if you've had their grits bowl, and what you think of that. If you would add anything different to the grits bowl, maybe some more veggies in there. Yeah, yeah, that might be good. And then on to the third one. I was so worried about this meal, y'all, that I was like, okay, I'm gonna film it. And if it doesn't work out, then I'll just film an additional meal. But what my holdup was, was that I wasn't sure exactly what cottage cheese and some pasta sauce was going to taste like. I was, I was really scared, along with the egg and stuff. Yeah, I was a little scared. But I went online and I was doing some research and like trying to come up with a way to make lasagna, because I've actually never made lasagna and kind of do it on the cheap and throw in some different ingredients to kind of replicate the lasagna. Now, I've had lasagna and it's delicious and this isn't quite lasagna, but it has a lot of the same flavors in there. The whole reason for all this would be because the ricotta cheese adds just a wonderful flavor in there along with the tomato sauce, but ricotta cheese is really expensive. so. I decided to do some research and then I found some similar recipes and then kind of just tweaked it to what I thought would taste good or better. So this is just making like a meat 
sauce for the lasagna. And this is going to be like a southwest lasagna. You could also call it possibly a southwest lasagna casserole. And if you wanted to use pasta instead of the corn tortillas that I'm going to use, you could do that. And that would probably give you a little bit better of a lasagna flavor. But this all came out really good. I actually let my husband and my son try it. And my stepson was like, that's really good. <laughs> and then I was like, do, do you want some? And he's like, uh, yeah. So he ate it and he was just like, oh, thank you. That was so delicious. So the kiddo liked it. He's a young adult. So, you know, you could try this for the kiddos. I thought it was really good too. And you don't have to, I guess, but I want it to make it a little bit firmer. So I decided to go ahead and pan sear or cook a little bit, warm up, whatever you want to call it, the tortillas so that they weren't as flimsy and crumbly. Then I have a small pan that I'm going to cook this in. So I need to cut my tortillas down to size to fit in this little pan. It's so cute. And this is, you know, for like individual servings. So I know some viewers are single or they have just themselves at home for long periods of time. So they need little, little meals they can fill them up. This was actually enough probably for about two servings. So if you wanted to eat a couple bites, maybe about half, maybe a quarter, and then take the rest for your lunch the next day, I didn't put it in the fridge, but I think that this would hold up quite well put in the refrigerator and rewarmed up. And then just go ahead and layer yours however you want to. I'm just kind of showing you how I'm doing mine. You, you could do it however you want to. It, I don't think it really matters. If you have a specific way, <laughs> Power to you, you just go ahead. And I was also afraid that the cottage cheese egg mixture was just gonna like absorb through and fall through all the cracks and that it was just gonna become this like big jumbled up mess. So all around, I was kind of worried about this. So, you know, if you have a recipe that you like, you could probably follow it, but this was just something that I kind of threw together after reading a couple of different ways that people were doing it. And also the egg will kind of puff up a little bit while it's cooking. So if you, you know, look inside of the oven to look at the golden beautifulness that is baking in there, it's going to like puff up a little bit because eggs do that. I've made like some egg bakes and some keto bread and they both require eggs and it just kind of puffs up like that but nothing to worry about once it cools it actually kind of shrinks back down and it's gonna look fine it's gonna taste fine it's gonna be fine I would just finish up with a layer of cheese on the top as much as you would like and then loosely tent some foil over top you don't need to cover it all the way it does need some air circulating underneath there and you'll bake it at 350 for about 30 minutes pull it out take off the tin foil look at the golden beautifulness that is going to become your lunch dinner breakfast maybe mm -hmm. and then put it back in the oven at 350 again and bake for about 10 minutes I did broil it for an additional five minutes because I wanted that golden brown on the top for you guys it's all for the looks so you don't have to do that if you don't want to but I think um it's a good idea anywhere from three to five minutes and then there you go it was quite quite good I was so happy I was so surprised and I just love it look at you can see the layers in there it looks very much like lasagna guys I hope you enjoyed these three budget meals if you did thumbs up subscribe and I'm here every Tuesday and every other Friday thank you so much for watching and happy eating my friend.